after we've got our horse nice and balanced on the ground and we've worked on the lateral flexion and getting the turns nice, getting the transitions nice, we come up here and do it in the saddle. Now when you, um, if you can make sure, I, I know you'll be pretty keen to get up and do the ridden stuff because that's what it's all about, having good ridden impulsion, but do uh, get that ground stuff going nice, the, the better you get that, the the more, you stack the odds in your favour, okay, so you know, the, the more chance of success you'll have when you come up to this riding section, okay. Now some horses, they'll get a bit claustrophobic, they'll be totally different to when you when they're on the ground to when they're ridden, and, and that's that does happen, but stack the odds in your favour, okay, and do some groundwork first. Okay, we're up here today, this is Major, we're on Major, and we've got a, a bridle on him. I'm going to do this in a bridle. Now, if your horse is still a little bit stiff and, and the groundwork, you know, he pulls a little bit on the lead rope and things like that, um, then you may want to ride in a hackamore. Now, uh, a quantum savvy hackamore is like a halter with reins, okay, so it has no, no bit. And um, then, you know, then if you have to use your rein to get some flex on him for safety's sake, um, you won't be hurting his mouth or anything like that because they can't concentrate if they're in pain, a bit like us really. So if you pull on that mouth, you know, if he gets scared, gets all stiff, and you pull on that mouth when, when they've got a bridle in there and it hurts them, it's going to make, make it worse. Okay, so if your groundwork's still a little bit um, a little bit heavy, then, then ride in a hackamore, do these exercises in a hackamore first, get them nice and soft, then come to a bridle if you want to. Some people um, would rather not use a bit at all, and if that's, um, if that's your choice, you can do that as well. Um, I feel it's best to go in what what the horse goes best in, really. Okay, so um, bridle or hackamore, it's up to you. Either way, we want our horse nice and soft and having good impulsion. So first up, we're going to do our rein positions. So lateral flex. Come here, mate. Okay. Hind quarter yield. Now this is an indirect rein we call this, so we just... Move the hind a little bit. Make sure these work, okay? In the front, make sure that front comes across, okay? So when you ask this to step across and you open out in the direction you want to go, make sure that that front end really comes across. Now some of your ho some horses, you know, you, you, you ask to do this and all they do is just sort of walk forward and do a little turn like that. And what that means is they're not using their hind quarter. Now that's going to affect your impulsion big time. So if you've got a horse like that, get their weight back a little bit and then ask them over. Okay, I'll do that again so you can see. Back a little bit. There. And then when you feel it's the time to step, ask them over. Okay, so just as that, in this case, it, just as he's going backwards and that front left foot goes to lift off the ground and you offer it out to the left, he'll, and you say, why don't you put that down over there? He'll say, oh, that's easy, I'll do that. Okay, but if you ask him to do it when, he's, when it's heavy on the ground, it's going to be harder. So if you can get a little feel for that, get a feel for getting the weight back and then over, will really help lighten up your horse's four-quarter steering. Okay, four-quarter steering is real important because it means they're using their hind quarter. That's what we're after. If they're using their hind, they're going to be lifting through the back, and that's what we're trying to strengthen and get our horse using a lot more. Okay, so once you've done your rein positions, we're going to do like we did on the ground. We did a little short range sideways when we first started up on the ground. So we're going to try, uh, not try that, we're going to do this. We're going to do a sideways around that marker. Now this marker, I'd like you to think of this centre marker. I'd better point out a little pattern that we've got here today. So we've got a centre marker and then we've got five, four barrels on the outside on each corner of a square and it's like a five on a dice. We call this our Southern Cross. We use this pattern a lot in Quantum Savvy for our impulsion programs and our strength, horse strengthening programs. So it's a great little pattern and you can do a lot of things in that one pattern. Okay, so this um, this centre marker has a imagine it has a personal space. Imagine it's a person actually, even better. So try not to stand over the top of it when you when you're doing your sideways or when you're doing your stops. Because if you teach it to stand over the top of things like that, probability is it'll stand over the top of people as well. And I find that horses that stand over the top of people tend to be the ones that push on the reins as well. 
So we don't want that. So sideways around your centre marker. To your left and right. Now when you're doing your sideways, make sure to have this, this side of open. So the direction you're going to is nice and open. And the direction you're going from is closed. So this leg can come on. This leg can stop the... This, uh, this rein will stop the forward movement if you have to. Or it'll become an indirect rein if you need it. There's more info on all these rain positions in our program, in our foundation program, if you would like to know more about that. Okay, looking good. As you go around, try, and, try not to just have your leg jammed on the horse as you're doing your sideways. It's a release that teaches the horse. So each time he steps, just take a little bit of pressure off your leg and release, okay? And that'll get your horse staying a lot calmer and a lot happier in your manoeuvre. So I'll do it this side so you can see. So leg on, off, on, off, on, off, and get in time with the horse. Okay, good job Major. Now we've checked our rein positions and our uh, short range sideways. We're just gonna take our horse out here and warm him up on some circles and start to get him laterally flexing, okay? So just walk him out. I'm going to take them out. Now th this, um, s these corner markers on our southern cross are about 15 metres from the centre marker. Okay, so 15 big steps is, uh, is a nice distance. Now I'm going to do a circle inside those outside markers and that's, that's the size of the circle that would be great to start on. Here I'm just going to walk around now some of your horses, if they're really impulsive, you might have to do this at a walk first up, okay, for the, for the uh, long horses. Alright, so I'm on my circle, he's going okay. Now anytime, if you're on this circle and you find your rein position, say you get a horse who he looks out of the circle over there and he gets all stiff in the body, they do that sometimes, and you offer a direct rein, which is this open rein to the direction you're going. If he doesn't take that and they pull against that, just do a little bit of indirect, which is the back end. Put your leg on and see how he flexed there. Just use that to get him back on the circle. So you use your back end steering, your indirect rein, to soften your horse back on the circle. And then release. Remember to release. When they're on this circle, Give them lots of release, lots of comfort, because you want them happy and, s and comfortable on this circle. So try not to be up here hanging on the reins or sitting forward and all that sort of stuff. Your rhythm is real important when you ride the horse. Try and be in time with the horse. Give them a loose rein when you're doing this impulsion training here. Okay? All right, you can do that at a walk. Just walk in a circle. Get that going left and right. Here I'm going to do. A, I'm going to spiral in and come to a sideways to a stop. So here I'm using my inside rein. Got my inside leg on, and I'm going a little bit sideways before I get to the marker. Here I'm at the marker, sideways to a stop. Okay. And that, what that's going to do is it's going to teach the horse to curve around and get his hind underneath him, lift through the back while he's going forward. That's impulsion. Okay, we're going to go back out the other way. Might start this side, just for fun. Now, you know, when you're, when you're starting like that, if, you, if you're going out to ride out on the marker again, then, you know, just sneak in a rain position, get a little bit of practice in there. Just sort of walk off and waste the opportunity of having a, you know, practicing a rain position. So, you know, I like to do four quarter yields or sideways when I, when I go out to do my next task. Anything that causes a horse to have to use his hind. Okay, here we're coming in again. Flexing. Really getting those shoulders across and that hind across. Oop. And sideways to a stop. Good boy. Okay. Get that good at a walk. Just get this front across. Good. And then we'll do it at a trot. Now for those of you with short horses, that's short flight distance, not how tall they are. <laughs> when you do your departure from the centre there, make sure they give you that trot straight off, okay? Don't let them dawdle along. Otherwise it'll become a habit. Okay, here we're at a trot. 
just getting him nice and warm. When he's nice, when he's going nice, that's when I'm going to bring him in. If he's all over the place, I'm not going to bring him in until he's nice. Here he's feeling pretty good. So inside leg, lifting my inside rein, keeping the rhythm sideways to a stop. Come over here so we can see you guys. Now when you're coming in on that, this is where this rein position is going to be real important. You'll find some horses will just, they'll come in and they'll just sort of dive on the front, okay, as you're coming in. And that, what that probably means is you're going to have to do, get the shoulders a bit looser. And the way to do that is to make sure you have your rein position in the right spot. Okay, so if you've got it too far back, it'll be all hind quarter. If you want the shoulders to loosen up a bit more, you're going to have to push that hand forward a bit more to get that... Uh, those shoulders a bit looser, okay, like that there. So if it's too far back, they'll do this. When they come off the circle, and you're going to need to push your hand forward a little bit more. And you might need to focus it, focus up and, and keep an eye on where you're going. Sometimes we tend to look down a bit, and again, that'll load up the front. Okay, so I'll do that again for you. Which way? This way. This is balancing our horse up. We need to balance them all, get them all balanced up before we go speeding them up. There he's travelling good, so I'm going to... Oh, I'll wait till I come around a little bit more so you guys can see. Okay, here. Here I've reached down my inside rein, my inside legs on, lifting my rein. I'm trying to keep that trot into my sideways to the stop. Looks easy, doesn't it? Okay, try and get that nice. I'll just, um, I'll show you, I'll show you what not to do. So that there was a nice balanced stop. He came in beautiful. Come back on this other side. If you do too much hind quarter, what'll happen is they'll come in and, and go on the front end a little bit too much. Okay, so here, if you do this, He sort of tripped a bit there. Okay, so a little bit too much hind quarter, loading up the front too much into the stop. Sorry, mate. Okay, so you'll need to make sure that you get that that little bit of sideways in there. Okay, got it. All right. Now I've done the sideways to the to a stop uh, at the trot. Now, if your horse is up for it, you can do that at a canter also, but do get that really good at a, at a trot first, okay? Trot is great because the horse's um, balance is 50-50 when he's in the trot, okay? When he's in the canter, it's on the hind a little bit more, but in the trot, he has to work and flex a lot more. I really like to, to get my horses um, really trotting into that stop. Now, if you've got a short horse who's lacking a bit of go, then it's real important to come around here in the trot and keep really keep that trot rhythm right to the last step right to where you finish and that's going to help teach him to pick himself up and get reward at the same time so he gets reward for picking himself up as he goes okay now you can do that at a canter also and i'll just do this at a canter for you so you can have a look now when we do it at a canter you'll need to come down to a trot for the sideways in because if you stayed in a canter you'd get a, a fly lead change and he'd actually flex the other way. All right. So we're in our canter. Now when you're in your canter, try and give him a loose rein and stay in time. In time, we're a bit slippery out here today. Stay in time with your horse. Try and keep that rhythm, okay? Right, here we go. Trot. Boom, 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 boom. I'll come right around to a stop. Now that last little bit I'd finished and he just walked a little bit more, that's okay because I'd quit when he was trotting. But I'd like to do that again, just get a little bit smoother. So I'll move my forequarter over just to practice a rein position. And we'll do this on the other side. Try not to slip over. Okay. 
<laughs> Alright, here we go. Keep this impulsion. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Oh, that's a good one. Bless you. That was a nice one. I had a nice trot rhythm to the stop. Okay, so if for those of you who have got a horse who maybe runs off a little bit at the canter, um, do this one before he runs off. If you, you know, even if you only get one or two canter strides in, then bring him in sideways to a stop and get to where you can build that to you know four or five strides or you know two or three laps. Try not to do any more than about four laps at this stage. Um, of you know, if your horse is doing four laps, he can do nice four nice laps. Then that's plenty. You don't want to be just out here running laps. Um, just for the sake of it, what we're doing here is balancing our horse up. Okay, so just just running laps won't actually teach them impulsion. Now that our horse understands that when we ask him to go, um, you know, come off of our leg and go sideways, that he's going to comfort, he'll start to understand that it's a good idea to get his hind underneath him and pick himself up through the back. And we're going to use this technique now out here in our forward to to help get that uh, good self carriage while we're going along. Now I better point this out, when, when I say leg, when we put our leg on, um, I don't mean leg, I actually mean hip. Yeah, uh, even before that, rhythm. Okay, so rhythm, hip, then leg. So if I say put your leg on, that's like your, your high phase. Okay, before that, it should have been your hip and it should have been your rhythm. So if you wanted to go sideways, you need to have that rhythm happening and then pushing your hip down and then your leg on. So there's all these little phases. If you can get that, um, you know, if you can break that down and make sure you have your rhythm first and then your hip and then your leg, if you can break that down into little um, smaller phases for your horse, what you'll find is pretty soon you won't need to use your lower leg or your leg so much and you'll just go, your horse will just be going from your seat. That'll be a nice thing. But we've got to offer it first, okay? So if you can start to really focus on that and make that become your habit, then your horses, every horse that you ride will get light. And that's what you want. Okay, we're gonna take this out now, use this technique, the sideways technique, to soften our horse on the circle. Now he's going pretty good in a trot here. What I'm going to do is just sideways him off the circle a little bit. I'll come round a bit more so that you guys can see. Alright, here we go. Leg, focus, out to the side a little bit, release, and then back on the circle. We'll do that again. Push him off the circle a little bit. Good, a little bit stuck on that one, took him a moment. Release, and then come back to the circle. Oh, not the center. We'll do this again. Good, and make sure that the hind and the forequarter go over when you do it. So it's proper sideways, it's like a diagonal, as you're going forward. So this here, boom, boom, boom. Now for some horses that's, you know, if you've got a horse, hang on a minute mate, <clears throat> if you've got a horse who's um, really stiff and he's been stiff for a long time or he's had impulsion troubles for a long time, then that's going to be a physical thing for him as well, okay, so, you know, just ask him to do, you might even start this at a walk and just get the horse to where he just can drift sideways and a little bit of a diagonal off the circle, walk him along to give him his release and then bring him back to the circle. That might be a physical uh, effort for your horse to actually get his hind underneath him and pick up through his back. So um, just go easy on him and do this, this um, video that we're doing here, this is a program, okay, so you don't just come out and think, right, it, it, you know, do this once and it's done. You need to do this over, you know, over days and weeks or even months, depending on your horse, to where they can do these tasks easy and you can do them at a walk, trot or canter. Okay, let's do this other side. Okay, sideways off the circle. And you'll find, you know, your horse will have one side better than the other, that happens. You know, it might be because of us, it might be because of them. Either way, 
need to practice that. That's nice. Remember, rhythm is real important in this. Back on your circle, mate. So here, I open out in the direction I want to go, get my rhythm out to the side. Good boy. And get the horse going out there. Now, if you have real trouble getting your horse to, to go out to the side there and he really resists, which some do, you might have to do something like this. Push it out to the side. And let your horse come down to a stop. So you really emphasize the stop, the release part. Okay, sometimes you know they don't see the release, so we've got to put like a big neon flashing sign on it. So you know you'll sideways off the circle and give them a stop. Alright, if you've got an impulsive horse. If you've got a horse who's uh, losing a bit of rhythm, like a short horse, losing that impulsion into there, that also might work for them as well. So I'll do that again for you. And you could even do it um, in the same spot. So here I could come around here, sideways this, towards this barrel. Okay, so sideways towards that barrel, give him a rest. Pretty soon we'll come around here and he, he'll see that barrel and, he, and, he, and you say, oh, okay, let's go over there. And he'll say, gee, I was just thinking that. And he'll come over here and you'll start to get really nice impulsion into that sideways. So that might be a technique that'll help you also. Now that we've got a few techniques to um, help soften our horse while we're going forward, which is our sideways, we're going to do some transitions. Now transitions are, are real important. You want good transitions. If you can't have a good transition, you're going to have trouble with the purity of gait. So here I'm in a walk. I'm going to just take this up to a trot. And I'd like a nice transition. So here I'm going to change my rhythm. Now the way we do... I'll just bring that back down again. The way we're going to do our transitions is our rhythm first and then we'll start to squeeze down our legs and if they still haven't gone then we're going to drive them forward. Um, we'll try, avoid kicking your horse. Um, it doesn't really do them all that good and it'll, all it does is desensitize the elevation part of our horse that we're going to need later on so try and avoid kicking okay. Also remember to use your rhythm first. Okay here we go. So I want to trot I'm going to change my rhythm to a trot. There. Here I want to walk. I'm going to change my rhythm to a walk. If he doesn't come down, I'm going to lift one of my reins and flex him a little bit. Okay, don't have to flex him off the circle. Just flex him, just tip his nose a little bit. So we'll do this again. I'll just come around this other side so you guys can see. Okay. Okay, here we go. Open up in front. Focus up, change my rhythm. Beautiful. Down a transition, relax my rhythm, flex. Not too bad. Alright. Now if your horse if you go up there and your horse is a bit sluggish on that transition up and then he blasts off, then you come back down and you do that transition again. So I'll show you what it might look like. So he goes boom, and you go oh, flex him. We'll try it again, and you go up again, and he blasts off, and you, whoa, flex him, you don't have to say whoa, <laughs> whoa him down, and flex him, until he can do a nice transition, you know, that might take you, you know, half a day, <laughs> well, that might take you 15 minutes or something like that, you keep doing those transitions, until he can give you a nice transition, when he does a nice transition, like that, then you'll reward him, by letting him trot. And then what will happen if you've got one that runs off, he'll start to run off a little bit and you think oh goodness what do I do now because if you flex him then he's just going to come down a transition so what you need to do then is just push him sideways a little bit until he settles a bit and then release. If he doesn't do it again sideways a little bit and release. Okay, and keep doing that until he comes down. Some horses will have real trouble with it, so you might have to sideways him and come down to a walk. 
Okay, now what that does is, is brings him back down to a walk while he's soft. See, if he, if he ran off along here at a trot, if he ran off at a trot and you slowed him down and said, no, don't do that, okay, you might teach him to run off. Because if you bring him back down and give him a reward and let him just walk along, then he thinks, oh, I get it. I go forward, I go all stiff, run off, and then she flexes, he flexes me, and it lets me do a walk. Well, that sounds good. Because I'd rather walk than trot. Okay, so keep an eye on that. So if he does run off here in the trot or get stiff, you know, anything like that, you don't want it, it's not good impulsion, good self carry, then if he does that, you're going to just push him sideways a little bit, soften him, and then let him trot again. If he does it again, you do it again. Okay? Sometimes you have to come down to walk. But at least, when he came down to a walk, he had his hind underneath him, then he picked himself up through the back, so you rewarded good posture, which is good impulsion. Now when it comes to the canter, you can do the same again, so I'll just do this other side for my canter. So we've done that side a bit. Okay, you ready mate? Up into my canter. Now again it's the same as the... I'll just slow this down. So I might bring him back to a walk. When you come up, you know, you do any transition, you know, if you're going from trot to um, canter or walk to canter, if he runs off in that canter, uh, in that transition, you do the same as we did in the trot, you just bring him back down to the gate that you were at and ask him to do that again. Okay. So trot. Okay. Up to a canter. He was a bit slow on that one, so I'm going to flex him down with my inside rein this time to a trot, then ask him again. That was better. That was a nicer one. This one, I'll let him canter on this one. Flex. Now, if, if they get a little bit stiff here or run off or something like that, again, just use your inside rein, push them sideways a little bit off of the circle. Okay, not too much though, because otherwise you'll get a lead change. So I'll do that again. Push him out here. Oops, I'm down a trot. Pushed him too far. <laughs> Got a bit of a lead change there. I'll come around this side so you guys can see. Okay, here we go. Canter. Off my leg. Good boy. Back onto my circle. Do that again. Keep coming. <laughs> Got a counter can. That's what happens if you do too much. Back to the trot. Okay, so just a little bit. Off, good boy. And back onto my circle. When they've done a nice job, you can even do your sideways to a stop. And give them a rest. Okay, so get that that um, get the horse coming off your leg nice at the canter as well as the trot and that'll help you be able to soften your horse when he gets a little bit impulsive. Here we're going to have a look at our simple lead changes and we're going to do changes of direction in our simple lead change. I'm going to use that flex that we've, um, the sideways technique that we've taught, taught our horses on the circle. We're going to use it here to change directions. Now when you first start out you might have to do this at a trot because remember it's the softness that's the key thing here. So here I'm in a trot, I'm going to lift my inside rein, come across, I'll let him come down to a walk, pass my centre marker, open out with my direct rein in the direction I'm going, which means you open out the leg and get your hip up on that side. 
and come back to my circle. Once you're on your circle, then do your transition. Get on the circle, then do your transition. Good boy. Okay, so try it. Inside rein, inside leg, dun, 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 down to a walk, past my centre marker, direct his nose back onto his circle. So I'm going to do a little bit of sideways here to get him on the circle because he's a bit stiff there. Up to a trot. Once you can do that at a trot with a walk change of direction, then we're going to take it up to a canter. Get the canter, now we're going to do inside rein, down to a trot, and make sure those shoulders come across. Out in the new direction. Now he's a little bit, wants to go into the centre there, so I just use my sideways to get him out to the circle. Up to a canter. Good. Inside rein now. Lifting it so the shoulders really come across. Past my centre marker. Don't you dip in there. So I just use my sideways there to push him out to the to the circle again. Try that again. What I really would like is a direct rein out onto the new circle. So here, trot. Boom, boom, boom. Shoulders loose. That's nice. Nice. Direct rein. That's better. Then up to a can. Good boy. Very nice. Then notice when I'm cantering, if I'm on a left lead, I lead with the left side of my body. That's nice. Direct rein. Dipped a little bit there too. Which dipped, I mean he turned a little bit too sharp after the marker. So if that happens, just use your sideways that we've been looking at to push him out onto that circle where you release him. Okay, here we're going to finish up with a sideways to a trot. Good boy. Try and keep that impulsion into that stop there. Right, and that's our simple lead changes. Now, you know you'll do those to help your horse get nice and calm, get nice and soft and flexed as he goes forward. So you can combine your circle with sideways techniques for your transitions. And here, you can use your... Um, flex to flex we call it or simple lead changes to every time your horse goes a little bit too fast or you feel that he's getting a little bit lazy then you'll do a change of direction get his really get that nice change of direction happening and bring him back out on the circle again it's our simple lead changes all right we're really getting a few techniques up our sleeve now in this one we're going to um, really get the horse on his hind quarter in his turns and we're going to combine that with some transitions. We're going to use our southern cross pattern here and we're going to do some what we call point to point. Okay, So we're going to ride to a point, um, do a turn and then ride to another point do a turn. Okay, So here's where we're at our centre marker and I'll ride straight towards this outside marker here and we're going to do a turn around it. So just did a walk on a loose rein first up. Going right up here to our barrels, come down to a halt with your hips, your horse's hips, lined up with his barrel here. And then we're going to walk around the barrel and get the forequarter to go around the barrel. Then we're going to release in the direction that we want to go. Okay. So the back end has to do a little circle and the front end has to do a big circle. So here we go, line up my hips, turn the forequarter. So see how the forequarter has to do most of the turn and the back end has to keep walking forward, otherwise it'll run over our marker. Okay, so it's like a pirouette. Line it up, turn. And you can have a bit of feel on, on your reins, both reins in this exercise, but try to only activate one rein at a time. Okay, so if you're doing a direct or a support rein. So direct, support, direct. 
a boy, off into our new direction. Right, get that nice and soft, get that going really well before you come up to just doing it all at a walk. Okay, so there's no stop, and that's what we're aiming for. The first bit is to teach the horse to come off your leg. Okay, I'll come back this other way now. To open out, turn, off in the new direction. Really make sure that the forequarter does a nice turn around that, okay? This is a great exercise and later on we'll use this as a physical exercise and we'll do this in contact when we're strengthening our horse. But at the moment we've got to get them to understand that they're just going to comfort. So if you come to the marker, open out for the new direction and then release, you go, oh great, I used my hindquarter, did my turn, I got release. So they'll put more effort into it. Okay. Once you can do that, we're going to take it up to a trot. In a trot, and, but then we come down to walk to do the turn, and this is the transition part. Up to a trot. Get ready. Line it up with our barrel. Walk. Turn. Up to the marker. And when you're coming into these markers, when you're coming down to that, um, just stop here. When we're coming into that marker and you're coming down your transition, you've got to get your, um, come back a little bit on your back pockets, take your legs off of your horse, and then widen out your reins and use your reins if you need to. But do all your body language first, okay? Same as your transitions up, body language first. Nice. Body language, then the reins. Looking good. Once you can do that with transitions, we we'll do the turns at the trot. But remember, they have to really make sure that forequarter, forequarter comes across there. Good. So as the speed comes up, make sure not to lose your your quality. Okay, so here I'm going to do a few of these turns. When I get a really nice one, I'm going to let him stop in the center there. That's a nice one there, really nice. So I'm going to come down to the center and stop here. Good boy. So the four quarters has got to come around real nice, okay? It gets them on their hind. It's a great technique teach them to get off your leg, follow your focus. Fantastic stuff. As with all these tasks, once you can do that at a trot, take it up to the canter. So here I'm going to, um, first of all I'm going to uh, walk the turn, so we're going to canter the straight, walk the turn. Okay, so turn, canter, walk. Now remember you need snappy transitions, so if you've been doing a nice job on those transitions that you did on the circle there before, you, then these departures will be a lot easier. Good. Oh, that's nice. Really good. Okay, now if you've got a horse who has a little bit of trouble with the leads, then you might want to start your canter just before you get to the straight bit, so about here. So then he canters to the straight. It'll help him get his lead. But if you can, do it nice and straight. So turn, canter. Looks pretty easy, doesn't it? Okay, and of course, you could take that up once your horse has developed a bit of strength and a bit of understanding. You could do that whole thing at a canter. Next we're going to do our rebounds, and these uh, rebounds are the same as what we did on the fence line before, um, but this time we're going to go to a marker, to our corner marker, and then we're going to back up, rebound back, and turn, go to our next marker, and what it's going to do is going to teach the horse to really use his hind in his turns, and to 
um, have nice transitions. So for the short horses, really make sure you get good transitions in all of these tasks. And for the long horses, this will really help um, to teach them not to just blast off. Okay, so we're going to ride up to our marker. We're going to widen our legs, sit back on our back pockets, widen our legs, widen our hands, go backwards. And then turn and go towards our barrel. So it's like that backwards and over that you do in your rein positions. Back, when he feels light, go over. Trot to the next one. Back. And just get this to where they understand it and start to help you out a little bit. There, that's nice. And over. That's a really nice turn. Okay. Now I find this is best from the trot. You can practice this at a walk if you need to just to get the pattern down in your mind. But the, the best uh, impulsion exercise is to do this at a trot. You can do it at a canter also, but get it at a, at a trot first. Okay. Now for the backup, sometimes you'll come into these backups and the horses you know, will be a little bit stiff and uh, want to keep going. So you come in, you might have to do it at a walk then if that happens. Come in at a walk sit on your back pockets, widen your hands out. Now this is something we've got to be careful of because us humans have a tendency to, if the horse pulls on us, you know, we use two reins and pull back. If that happens to you, just make sure you use one rein at a time, okay? So they're both, they've both got feel, but only activate one. So that one, that one, that one, that one. And what that'll do is it'll put a little bit of lateral flex again in your horse and that'll help soften him into his back up. Okay, and it'll have a bit of rhythm there, so therefore he'll get some release as well. Because remember, release is what they learn from. Okay, so back, if he's a little bit heavy, one rein, one rein, one rein until he softens. Ah, there, good boy. Turn and off to our next marker. Okay. Now you can do this at a canter. All right, so it'll be something like this. Turn. Down to a canter, back it up. Turn. And try to get the lead in the direction you're going. So if you're turning to the right, like this one here, try and get a right lead. Good boy. Keep going back. Turn. <laughs> All right, and that one, you know, that's a great one for short horses. Really get those, that, um, make sure you get that impulsion really good and that'll really liven them up and they'll enjoy that um, canter that they'll get out of that nice departure. That's our impulsion exercises, a series of impulsion exercises. Remember to get your ground stuff going well, it'll stack the odds in your favour. Then come out here and do these uh, tasks that I've showed you here today. Remember, start slow, get them nice and neat, get the horse nice and calm and confident, and give them a loose rein as often as possible. Stay focused and have fun.